Welcome everyone to another edition of Stepping Up to the Plate, Playoff Edition, Championship Edition with the Celtics on the verge. They're up 2-0 in the NBA Final Series against the Dallas Mavericks. And I think everyone in town is on edge, uh, if you're like me, because you can sense it. It's right there in their hands. And uh, I don't get a sense that they're going to let this, this one slip through their fingers. Uh, and so a lot of excitement here in Milton. Uh, there was a lot of excitement uh, with playoff at the high school. Uh, but sadly, like in one fell swoop, it seemed like the, the boys uh, lacrosse team, the softball team, the baseball team, and the rugby team all got eliminated. Almost it seemed like on the same day. But congratulations to all those teams for a superior season, for uh, you know, a great year. And uh, we want to congratulate all those uh, Milton High graduates as well uh, who were uh, able to collect their diploma after uh, four trying years. So congratulations to everyone there and onward and upward to all of you. So, uh, so much to discuss here with my main man, main man Al Prezzuti. Uh Al, uh, you know, we've got the Stanley Cup playoffs going on at the same time with, with the, uh, well, actually concurrently and they're going alternating bases. But uh, you, you've got the Florida Panthers also on the verge, uh, a 2-0 lead over the uh, Edmonton Oilers. And uh, the Celtics, more importantly right now, 2-0, up to love. Uh, we had some great tennis being played at the French Open by Carlos Alcaraz uh, against Alexander Zarev. Uh, what, what an unbelievable men's final that was. And then, of course, now we got golf with the U.S. Open on the verge and so let's start with the Celtics Al. Uh, I mean game one was a telling game for me because I wanted to see how Dallas would respond you know and uh, and I wanted to see how Christoph Porzingis would respond to being off for so long and he did not disappoint and I'll tell you uh, someone made the the comment on one of the uh, the, the post game I like guess ESPN they were talking about the MVP, possible MVPs. And someone said, you know, Brad Stevens should be the MVP. Yeah, I saw that. And, I, and I thought, you know, it would be brilliant because he's a guy who constructed this team and brilliantly so, you know. Well, I mean, if you're looking at players that would be MVP, in my opinion, this is just from what I've seen, Drew Holiday is, first of all, he's a terrific Terrific defensive player. He's yeah. Awesome. But the other thing is, he moves all over. He moves without the ball, which you have to do. So somebody has to cover him at all times. He he gets key rebounds for a little. You know, he's not this yeah. center. But he shoots. He he's a, he's a terrific player. And I think in the second game, he was clearly the most valuable player. No doubt. Porzingis in the first game. No doubt. Everybody wasn't expecting him to be as sharp as he was. I mean. But you could say what you want about White makes a block, which I thought, though, if you look at it very closely, it was a foul. Hand on ball. Uh, that could have been the other goal way. Goaltending, you think? No, I mean, when he went up and blocked it. Well, I mean, that's, if it's a hands on the ball, that's fine. Yeah, but, I mean, he didn't block the ball. He, he actually hit his hand and then the ball. Well. But anyways, you know, he's a terrific player because he skied. To, to, to block that. He shot. and Jalen Brown got back on uh, PJ Jaylen Washington, Brown yes. Has played, in my opinion, the best I've seen him play in terms of consistent. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, yeah. Jason Tatum is Jason Tatum. If he doesn't score, he gets assists. He but gets you know what? And, and I, I, I want to address this too, uh, kind of like the elephant in the room regarding Jason Tatum. You know, it's been going round and round that, you know, he doesn't have to be great for this team to win, right? And I wholeheartedly agree. And you know what? And I think he realizes that now. Well, and I, I think mean, he's, he's making this team better by doing the good things that he's doing, by, you know, driving and kicking and then facilitating. So, you know, it was, it was funny to me after game one, it, Al, it seemed like an act of desperation on Jason Kidd's part to come out and actually declare Jalen Brown's their best player. Well, you know, they have five of them, actually. All year long, they've had five really good players. That, 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 that's what kids should do. What he did, though, uh, was okay. I think a, a lot of people would do that because he's trying to, 
he's trying to put this uh, this controversy about Jalen Brown and Versus Jason Tatum. Tatum out there. And, and you know what? I, I don't think anybody listens to that stuff. I thought Missoula did a great job. Incidentally, I, I think Missoula has done a nice job in handling the press after the games because yeah. he, he identified uh, Holiday, he's identified White, he's uh, he actually identified all five players, but on an individual basis. This yeah. is a team. Anyways. But you know, um, to your point, Al, to your point, he also identified Peyton Pritchard for that big, well, Pritchard, that big three pointer he knocked down at the, you know, say most guys will give up that shot because yeah. they'd be afraid to, you know, uh, it would affect their numbers, but not him. He's, yeah. he's going to take that. In, in my opinion, Holiday was the uh, MVP of the second game. Porzingis was the MVP of the, of the uh, opening game because nobody thought that he was going to be after 30 some odd days yeah. uh, capable of doing what he did. I mean, he, he's, it was he's, extraordinary. Huh? He's a terrific player in yeah. terms of he can shoot, he can block shots, he's a big presence. Oh. But as I said, I think before, you know, you take the NHL, you take the NBA, you take the World Series, and you take all of these. The home team should win, should win the first two games, especially in basketball and hockey, and they did. Yeah. If Dallas, we'll see what Dallas does tonight. Well, and I, I here's the thing. I mean, what can they possibly do right well, now? Well, a 60, 70 percent Porzingis can just turn it a little because they Dallas played a lot better in the second game than they did in the first game. So I'm, all I'm saying is they're going to be home. They're going to have the a home crowd on their side. Uh, Porzingis would might be at 60 or 70 percent, whatever he is. Uh, that could be a closer game. Dallas wins. Now you've got. A little more optimism, and then the, the next game is the most important. I don't believe the Celtics are going to lose. No, but it, you never it, know. It, it becomes a little exponentially more difficult, yes, because you're playing on the road, you're playing without Porzingis. But let me tell you something: the Celtics have won every road game in they've this a, playoffs. Well, they've been a better road team. They've been a better road team, <laughs> and team. they've done it without Porzingis. Yeah, not in the and playoffs. And they've done so. it with, you know, Lou Cornett going out leaving Al Horford to handle it, and then they bring in O'Shea Brissett, yeah, who not, helped out. Not during the regular season. You can no, go no, this without, the playoffs. No, I know, but even, well, the teams, the first two teams that they played, if they lost, even if they put out uh, nothing. Well, the fact of the matter is when you play seven games or you have to win four games in a series against what would be considered Al, the best okay, in the West. Okay, so against the Pacers, they, the Pacers lost Tyrese Halliburton, arguably their best player. Right. But they still had Pascal Shockham, and they still had Miles Turner, two bigs that gave them problems. Yeah, but and the Celtics were hanging on for dear life. But Pacers again, to won. your point, Jalen Brown stepped up. When it, when it got to that point in the game where, okay, someone's got to answer, he answers. Mm -hmm. you know, And I love that about him. I love how he like just steps up and everyone kind of act with. And then you had – a guy like Horford step up big time, you know, and knock down three pointers. So here's the thing, and I and to your point about Jason Kidd, kind of trying to create a wedge, uh, wedge issue for the Celtics to create some doubt, to create some controversy in their locker room. I would throw it back at him and say, Hey, what are you going to do about Kyrie? He's 0 for 8 in the in the three pointers in the last two games. You know, the interesting what are you going thing, to do interesting, about getting your guy help? But the interesting thing in watching these two teams, you've got. To, let's use Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Okay, one game, Jason Tatum is is unstoppable in terms of rebounds, assists, and he's a triple yeah. double threat. The next game, it's Jalen Brown. The next game, and then forget the. I'm not saying that Holiday and White and all those guys. I'm not saying that they're not important pieces, but I'm just using those two guys. As their top two players. Right. Okay. If you look at Dallas, you've got Doncic and you've got Kyrie. And no comparison. Doncic looks like he's out of control half the time. Oh. He's a great shooter. Fall and away. out of shape. Yeah. And <laughs> but he, he has a fall away. But short of that, he's not a a uh, a driving force like Jalen Brown yeah. can be a driving force. A lot of gamesmanship right now going on on part of the Mavericks. You know, uh, I thought there was some suspicious nature to uh, Doncic's chest contusion. 
evidently he got a, a shot to kind of numb, numb the numb the pain, but yet he shows up in the warmups, bandaged around the chest and his knee, and it's got an ice bag yeah, okay. in his knee. And I think he was like trying to create an air of doubt about his availability. Celtics would have done the same thing. I mean, right. this is what they do, you know. Uh, so we'll see. You know, I think what this will show it is the Celtics are clearly the better team. But sports is sports. Yeah, You've got to play the game. And, you know, key situations in a home arena can swing in, in any sport. Yeah. Now, if you look at the NHL, you've got the Panthers, who are, in my opinion, are the Celtics. They're the best team playing. Yes. However, they win two games down in Florida. They could have lost the second game. They could have lost the first game, incidentally. Well, but, yeah, they had to come But back. what they yeah. do is they have guys like you talk about Jalen Brown coming in at the right time. They have the same type of players. Yes. Just when you think Good that analogy, they're not yeah. going to win, yeah. uh, Bravrowski makes a, a, an unbelievable save. Um, guys like um, Verhagen. And Rodriguez. Making yeah, Rodriguez scores two, two goals. goals. You got Verhagen scoring goals. You got Bennett. You've got Reinhardt. You've got Kachuk. Just like the Barkov, Celtics. Barkov, Alexander Barkov. Barkov. Now his they're availability loaded. might yeah. be a little bit in But they're question. loaded. But then you look at, and I'm telling you, I look at the Edmonton Oilers, and if they don't go after Ullman, they're stupid because that goal is okay. Yeah. He's okay. He's not, he's, a, not, he's not a he's But not a, Connor McDavid reminds me, and this I know is going to aggravate people, reminds me of Bobby Orr in terms of I, the I was, speed. Speed. Yes. He when he takes it around the net, he goes by people like they're standing still. They're taking wax at him. I you mean, ever see when he's going by people at, at, at you know past the neutral zone. There's only it about two or three guys that I would say, other than Bruins, that I would pay to see. He's one. Yeah. It's if funny, they come into town, I want to see him. You made you made a great observation there, Al. I noticed too that every time he carries the puck across. No one can pin him up against the boards. They cannot catch up to him. No. And because if they try to, like, go at him, he's going to be gone. Oh, he, he, so you got to stay in front of him. But to stay in front of him, you really got to be skating fast. He not only can score, though, but he's also pretty decent on the, on the, uh, on the passes. Dreisaitl has been a little – hasn't scored as well as everybody was hoping that he yeah. would. But He's their see. Tatum. Well, he could be, yeah. he, but he, he's, uh, he's an interesting guy because he's a harder hitter. Edmonton doesn't hit as hard as the Panthers, and they don't check anywhere near as, as well. Oh, as the oh the Panthers God. are the best checking team. There were some, there was some time, big time collisions in that game. But every time they go to the boards, it's a Panther and an Oiler, and a Panther comes out with a puck. Yeah, I mean, I it's unbelievable. That. The Bruins never have anything they like that. They put a lot of pressure on a team. By pinning them inside their zone, sixty minutes, and not allowing the other team to get the puck yeah. out, sixty. So, minutes. Al, was that a function of the Bruins in the case of the Bruins Panthers, the Bruins inability, or the Panthers just being very good at that? I think it, it, it it's because more, we're seeing the same thing with Edmonton. Yeah, but I think it's more this. I think the Bruins against every team can't Had get out problem. of the zone. Yeah, yeah. and the even Bruins against the, even against, against Detroit. Even against some of the teams that the Bruins Blots against Jets every team yeah. are so one-dimensional and so easy to predict where it's going to go. Pasta, 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 pasta all the time. Yeah. That all you have to do is cover him, and the other guys are, are not, and they don't get out of the zone. So yeah. that aside, the Panthers, you don't know who's going to score. Right. And they check. Yeah. And they've got a decent goaltender. And adequate, I'd say a little better than adequate defense. Yeah. But they're loaded. They got six guys that would be on any team status. So in Boston, as would be the case in, uh, I think, down in South Florida, they should fire up the duck boats because I see a parade. Uh, in well, short let's, order. let's see what happens with Edmonton. I'll tell you one thing about Canada's a buzz right now with the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. And, and hockey is, an, is a national <laughs> sport, really, of course, of course. In, in Canada. Not so much in this, in this country. But yeah. I think 
they have the offense, which they haven't scored, incidentally, but they have the offense to beat the Panthers. Yeah. But I'm not sure they can figure it out. That's, that's coaching. Don't forget, Panthers got a great coach. This I guy, love that guy. He's a, he's a decent coach. Yeah. And he's got Paul them, he's got them yeah. playing 60 minutes, which I would question whether Montgomery ever had the Bruins play 60 minutes. Mm. They started a lot of games down one, two to nothing, yeah. and lost a lot of games at home. Because they just kind of like fizzled out. And then, the unfortunately, I flipped. You know, we got, we got some time here to talk about the Red Sox. I flipped over to them. First pitch, first pitch, Schwaba. <laughs> 420 feet home run. I know. I, you know what I was saying now? You know what I was yeah, saying? Why can't we get players? Yes, like why that? can't we get guys like that? Yeah, well, then you he know? comes up again and hits another home run. Unbelievable. Ow, that guy, that guy was here. They yeah, could have really. kept him. They could have kept Hunter Renfro. They, you know, what's the point of that? Well, Heim Bloom was tasked with, like, just pairing payroll. That was his task. And well, he loses I, his job I, for it. I'm not sure. That and they, I don't know that, that Craig Breslow's not going to be I, doing I'm the same not thing. sure that Breslow or, or um, um, what's his name, uh, Kennedy or Cora know what these guys can do. I look at this team and I go, look at this kid Smith on first base last night. He made an error that I wouldn't have made. Right. Jeez, the throw was right there. It goes right off there. his glove, and then they score two runs on that. Yeah. And so, and then the pitching. You know, you give up two walks and then a guy hits a three-run homer. Bingo. Walks kill you. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. And walks in baseball uh, are like free gifts. It's yeah. Like, it's like foul th it's free It's a free throws. run. You're yeah. giving them a free run, a chance at a free run. So, yeah. you know what? I, I think the Red Sox are at best, at best, a 500 team. And that's where they're hovering right now. Al. Yeah, but you know what? They're going to lose to the <coughs> Phillies. They'll use, lose to the Yankees. The Yankees are a much oh better God. team. Oh my God! So then there'll be seven or eight games. I think the Yankees five, are going to get Soto back too, maybe for that yeah, series. Well, oh God! Imagine being seven games out. Uh, well, I'm going to watch that one moves. through my fingers. You know, it's going to be like there'll be so twenty bad. out by the time July Fourth. Oh, 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 well, they're twelve out now. So they're going to be sellers. Well, I would think so. But and do you think do you think they fire Cora? I think so. You think he's gone? I, I think Cora. I don't think that would be fair to Cora. I do. I they do. gave him no body last year. They didn't go. Al, remember at the trade deadline last year? What did they do? Nothing. They did nothing. Yeah, but let's let's. And that let's, sent a message to everyone in that clubhouse that okay, we've given up. Yeah, but let's be honest about this. Cora, the only time he's ever really won anything, right? When he was at Houston, he was just a what do you call it? Uh, well, he won here. He won here, but yeah. they, they supposedly... He won, a, he won a World Series here. Yeah, but when the first year he came in here, he wins. But the, before that, forget the, the, um, the Houston stuff. One year, where have they been since? Now, you might blame Kyan Bloom. Yeah. I, would bet, I would blame Who the Who was owner. the GM at the time they won? Who was the GM? It wasn't I'm Blue. No, it was, what's his name? Dave uh, Dombrowski. Yeah, Dombrowski. He went out and spent money. He brought yeah, well, he went to the here. Phillies, too. And, he, and look what he's doing at the yeah, Phillies. Yeah. Well, hey, Come I understand now. that. But I think that they don't understand. The Red Sox have the worst farm system in baseball. One of. So then, then you look at the team that they have on the field. It's their farm system. So how could these guys who have the worst farm system come up here? Look at it. I always like Bobby Dahlbeck, but he can't hit. Hmm. He's still hitting 140, 160. He's killing it down in Worcester. Yeah, but then you well, I maybe be you might be able to do that. But you got Jaron Duran who started the season at 390s at 260. Yeah, pitch is catching up to him. You got Devers who can hit home runs is hitting 280. I don't 280 know. I don't know if he's a 300 dollar man. 300 million dollar. Yeah, man. that I mean, he's not a 300 million dollar man. You got. No. They've made more mistakes than anybody. They've the got biggest mistake, Al, and the one they'll never live down is trading Mookie Betts. Well, they got well trading Mookie Betts. Connor Wong. Connor Wong. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> boy. Connor Connor Wong's making me forget about Mookie Betts. You yeah. know, unbelievable. But Al. you know, you're watching this team is frustrating because if you're a baseball fan, they don't do anything really well. If you think about it. 
The only thing they've had even close to doing well is the starting pitching. Yeah. You know, they've got no defense at all. They no. make more errors. They lead the league in errors, incidentally. Yeah. So we'll leave that well alone because I'm tired of talking about the Red Sox. I want to talk about Tom Brady coming back to Foxborough yeah. uh, as we speak. It's going to happen uh, on uh, June 12th tonight. Which I wouldn't is go 12th. if they and gave me a ticket. No? Al. Come on, Al. No, I wouldn't. He, he, <laughs> what has he done for you lately, right? <laughs> no, it's not even a question of that. I mean, when he was here, he was a great quarterback and all of that stuff. I don't have any problem with that. I just think it's a, you know, he leaves here. He's This whole thing about was it uh, Belichick, was it uh, Kraft, why did he leave? Blah, blah, blah. Even if it was Belichick, even if it was opera, Kraft, though. it doesn't what matter. Opera. Right. What a soap opera. And, uh, you know, who? somebody said he, he was stunned about the roast that they did. He said. Who was stunned? Somebody. somebody Brady? One of the players. No, no, Brady. Brady. Wish he never did it now. Of course. And then somebody else said he was. It kind of tarnished his image it. a little bit. Yeah. It did. But you know. anyway. So uh, are they going to be doing? A, are they going to try and rehabilitate that image? Oh yeah. That squeaky clean. Oh, oh yeah. You oh, know, yeah. boy next door. Oh, um, yeah. I work harder than thou. You yeah. know. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah. They're going to try very hard to, if you want to call it, rehabilitate his image, which. Doesn't matter to people. This is the issue. It mattered 20 years ago, 30 years ago. People cared about that stuff. Nobody cares about anything anymore. They just want him to be able to win, yeah. and they wish they he, he would have won here more often. And he might have had they went and drafted better players around him. Yeah, you know? I think that that to me is not even. I would like when I say I wouldn't even go. That's not a big thing to me. I watch, you know, and I watched. We talked about uh, tennis, and I watched the golf. I watch yeah. a kid like Scotty Scheffler, who almost lost that match the other day. He oh, yeah. bogeyed yeah. 17. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was he booted he that was, putt. Yeah. He was fortunate, he but was. he's like the Panthers and the Celtics. When they need <laughs> to do it, they do it. He has a clutch gene. He does. And, and but he's he, on a run like no other. He's won five. Unbelievable. This year. Yeah. I mean, he won the Palmer, he won the Nicholas, if you want to call him Muirfield. Okay, the Masters, Nicholas. the PGA. He won the Masters, the PGA. And now and if he gets the U.S. Open and he go, and then he, if he, he, could he make a run at the Grand Slam? Well, I, you know what, there's nobody better. Let me put it this way. I don't think there's anybody right now better than him. So I think he's, he's the Tiger Woods of yeah. this current um, and genre. And how special would it be for him having now a newborn son, Bennett, to win on Father's Day at Pinehurst, uh, where know. we last saw Payne Stewart, you know, and, and I like I don't like those stories, you know. They go, oh, for the uh, first time on. he won as a new father. Yeah. Plenty of guys have won as a new father. It's because it's but in golf, Shepard it's right it's, it's it's I think it's more special. I don't think so. I, you know what? You maybe, know, maybe, it's because uh, you can play golf with your son. Yeah, you know? but the kid's six weeks old. He was he shows up at the at, uh, at Muirfield. The yeah, yeah. I mean. I, I think it's a nice thing. Don't get me wrong. What I'm getting I'm you wrong, it's, Al. No, it's, not the, it's not the story getting, of... Uh, Al, I'm getting you totally wrong about this I, here. I but it's not, to me, it's not that... Are you against thing. families? No. no. Uh, anyway, so... But, no. I mean, then in the golf, I mean, on the uh, tennis, we watched Alcaraz... What a great match that was. Uh. Beat Sen I, I, but Zero choked. Big time. Let's, Big time. Let's, let's Big say... Time. He had that Well, match. I mean, and if Zarev would have won, would we have been saying the same thing about Alcaraz? No, I'll tell you what. Because Alcaraz it, got, had, had him dead to rights. Yeah, but I'll tell you one In thing. the third set. Zarev's got a bigger serve, okay? Big time If serve. that gets to a, 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 what do you call it? Um, serve and volley. No, the, you know, when they tie and then they play. But I forget what they call it. But anyway, uh, if that gets to that, it's a service game. Yeah. Okay. He, he could have won that, okay? Yeah. He made a couple of huge mistakes. Alcaraz, I don't care what anybody says, I've never seen anybody cover the court better than Alcaraz. On clay, though, you know, it, that, it lends itself to that kind yeah, of court coverage. Yeah, but you know what? I On saw, a hard I think court Djokovic, surface, Al, it, that's a different story, I think man. Djokovic and Medvedev are two guys that if you're playing, they're like backboard. Because you hit it, they get it back. They hit yeah. it, they get it. If they run you on from a, side to I side. I think on a hard court surface, Zarev's uh, service 
got a better well, shot. And and they explode off the court. Yeah, yeah, but I'll tell you one thing about Alcaraz. You can't run him. If you run him and, and he... If, if Zarev did, I, and I, oh, I had There's people over my house we were watching. I said, if yeah. Zarev doesn't win his first serve, Alcaraz wins, because yeah. his second serve is not as good. Yeah, and Alcaraz, a, if you start playing side to side, side to side, back and forth, 10, 12 times, Alcaraz is going to win. Yeah, and he did. Yeah, he and, sets and you I'll up tell on you, return. when yeah. he hits that forehand on this side to this side, <laughs> with the from add to know, let court. Everybody has to. Everybody plays to the middle. Yeah. And I watched Zarev, and I, I and I saw him kind of lean this way, and Alcaraz just sees Boom. it and he r- rifles. Yep. I mean, right the down kid's the got a cross court. Yeah. I think, quite frankly, forehand cross he, court if he, smash. If he keeps his his uh, I guess uh, regimen in order. Because yeah. I, I think he, he has a little problem every so often, hydrating and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But if he keeps his regimen in order, he's going to be the best player. And I think he's better than center. And, and a likely, I think, favorite to go on to win Wimbledon. But at any rate, we're going to keep our eyes on the Celtics. Uh, we're hoping that they get the job done in Texas. And if not, well, come back home, Celtics, and we'll get it done here. All righty, everyone. That's going to do it for us. I want to thank my main man, Al Perzuti. We look forward to seeing you here next time on Stepping Up to the Plate. Take care, everybody. <laughs>